Hi, you're watching Vlad Steinberg's YouTube channel. If you create a piece of music using a set of rules that determine where the next note, harmony or pause should be, then that's algorithmic music. Today I'm meeting an artist who has created composition that will last for 17 trillion years and he's also built a device to play that melody and it's based on a Raspberry Pi. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. So today we're in Wolfsburg, the city of Volkswagen. This is Benjamin Heidersberger. He has developed this box you can see right here. This is a player for a melody that plays for 17 trillion years and then ends. We'll explore the story and technology behind this algorithmic music playback device and also the centuries-long history of algorithmic music, starting some 300 years ago. So, what was your inspiration to build this player? Actually, uh, I started to research the history of algorithmic music and uh, found a lot of examples dating back. You're probably referring to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who threw some dice to compose and wrote a uh, sort of algorithm to do that. I grew up here in Wolfsburg. Uh, my father was a photographer. We are here in his studio in the 50s actually he developed algorithmic art in the field of photography which became quite famous now the so-called rhythmogram so he was already uh, considering sort of rhythm and photography maybe this was an inspiration for me but actually i started uh, an artist group with a friend of mine uh, in the late 70s here in wolfsburg peter elsner and uh, we developed all sorts of crazy ideas from architecture to music to performance to life style and one of our projects was was called solar powered random sound generator this was a sculpture, a sound sculpture that was supposed to be deposited all over the world in 30, 40 uh, uh, locations. And we wanted to show this project in the uh, 84 Ars Electronica, but it never happened because we dissolved the group and uh, each one uh, went his own way. The core idea was to transform uh, sunlight into music. Some years later, I was on a sailing trip in Sardinia. I started to program uh, thinking of what could have been the sound of these sound sculptures. I wrote the program in BASIC on a small HP 200 LX handheld computer. The only sound output of, of, the, of BASIC is of course beep and it's quite annoying. And so after a while people asked me to stop programming. And But I was thinking, well, if the sound of beep is so bad, then uh, I switch over to piano sound, which I like a lot. Do you think that the development of technology in the late 70s and then the 80s and 90s uh, were helpful for your development of this box we see today? The first synthesizer I built, the computer synthesizer, was on an 8080 microprocessor that I bought in the US. And actually that had a sound output, so I could program uh, simple tunes. Also a reverb was possible, a simple reverb. We see in general a movement from hardware to software, and this is also what happened in the project. The first uh, pentatonic permutation player was a Raspberry Pi with a basic program running under Linux. I came quite far with the project. I mean, uh, there is the uh, synchronization of the operating system through DCF77, which is the like the transmitter of long wave radio in Europe that synchronizes all watches here. And uh, there is the Raspberry Pi, there is an amplifier and a digital analog converter, the two speakers, which eventually generate the sound. So after two minutes, the machine is synchronized and plays uh, synchronous with all other machines, um, the melodies uh, from pentatonic permutations. Okay, we should talk about the, the artistic intention of the project. And one thing we need to mention is you also do live performances with these boxes. We have a video snippet here we can watch. The original idea that a melody runs for 17 trillion years, there is an idea uh, that the melody starts at the beginning of the universe. Why exactly this amount of time and how do you make sure it stops? 
There are several approaches to the idea. One approach is to use the beginning of time as the beginning of the composition. It's called pentatonic permutations because it's all possible permutations from the very simple to the last one in 16 trillion years. And I know that they never repeat because it's all based on prime number multiplication. I write kind of develop the soundtrack for the universe. Every moment of time is tagged by a unique uh, melody that never repeats. Repeats. Permutation basically means the rearrangement of elements. There are famous thinkers and philosophers that used permutations in the past already. For example, Ramon Lull was one of them who was creating knowledge through permutation, basically. But there are other approaches as well. For example, Borges, the, the poet or writer in, from South America, he developed a concept called the Library of Babel. The Library of Babel contains all books that have ever been written or that can be written in the future because each volume of the library contains a different permutation of the alphabet. And I find this idea quite intriguing because with lim limited elements you can have a, a limited number of permutations. Basically what I do is I sonify time into music and personally I'm very attached to piano music because I usually listen to the Goldberg variations played by Glenn Gould in the morning and uh, the Steinway piano is kind of burned into my ears. I remember I think it was the late 70s that uh, everybody uh, was quite um, amazed by Brian Eno's composition, Music for Airports, but there are other influences as well. There's the Long Now Foundation in the US that tries to build a clock that runs for 10,000 years. John Cage with the composition that uh, Cage called As Slow As Possible, and the, the composition lasts like 630 years, and every couple of weeks there's a new note played, and so people gather when there's this change of notes, and it's quite funny. Let's uh, talk about uh, the way you developed the software on this box. Getting the idea and uh, then developing it into a piece of code was quite challenging because I experienced that myself <laughs> sometime later. So you had the, this idea, we, we need a melody that tags every moment in time from the beginning of the universe on. Now we need to develop a piece of code that actually does it. The core idea of pentatonic permutations is basically a sequencer of 16 steps that cycle through prime number long scales. Because they are prime number long, I know that the composition never repeats until it, it's, it's ending. I use some uh, rests in the composition and it could happen that two melodies sound similar, but that means that in the pauses notes would be played that you can't hear. But uh, mathematically I'm sure that each sequence of 16 notes is different from the other one. Eventually I ended up with 1200 lines of uh, basic code that generates MIDI output, which I'm was quite proud of because there are lots of problems with MIDI. I mean, it's a non-standard baud rate and all the MIDI commands you need to implement and so on and so on. So eventually everything boiled down to what I call now pentatonic permutations. So I decided for one composition, this composition is running. One of the other core ideas is synchronicity. Every pentatonic permutation player plays the same note at the same time. So it's basically like a radio transmission. I believe the listeners create a mental network of people listening to that composition because they hear the same things at the same time. In earlier times it was quite normal for people to watch the same TV show and talk about it later and eventually everybody got Spotify so you can listen to your own stuff uh, whenever you want and I want to bring that old experience of consuming something together also in, in that uh, pentatonic permutation player. Yeah, having this hardware is good and well, but we could also install the software on uh, smartphones so that everyone can listen to this piece of music synchronously with a crowd of people. So let's quickly take a look at the app I made. I decided it should be a web app, so you can run it on any computer capable of running a browser, which means resorting to HTML, CSS and JavaScript. 
Luckily, modern browsers come with a complete audio suite built right into them, so I didn't have to start from ground zero. As you heard in the video, one of the main requirements for the app was synchronicity. Other than the original hardware player, I had to resort to the system clock, which itself relies on the network time protocol NTP. Now, as you might have noticed, in Windows, the system clock won't show you milliseconds. So, after some back and forth, we decided to add a drop down menu for the listener to manually sync if his or her machine is early or lagging behind. On a technical level, the sequencer uses a timeout function which is running inside worker thread, which itself is a very unreliable way of getting a precise timer. Although worker threads are running in the background without being affected by the graphical operations the browser is performing, the timer will drift. So, in each stop, we will take a look at the system clock and if we're early or late. We will then store the difference and use the values we collect over time to calculate the median value and correct the timeout function with that value, which will give us a relatively precise clock. For the piano sound, I used JavaScript sound fonts, a library which converts sound fonts to JavaScript objects. I used the freely available Salamander piano as a sound source. As a bonus, we added the MIDI out function using the browser's web MIDI interface. It will scan your system for MIDI out ports and then send notes to the MIDI device of your choice, so you can use your favorite hardware synthesizer to listen to the piece. I also added an impulse response reverb because web audio can do that. There are a number of nice sounding reverbs we recorded, among them a cathedral room and the reverb of an Ovation Peak synthesizer. Last thing to do was to get the algorithm right. I left the debugging screen in the software so you can see how the piece works yourself. Just open the web player with a parameter debug in the URL as shown on screen right now and then you can see the player moving through a row of 15 or 16 lines, of which the first five lines are pauses. In each remaining line there is a starting point marked in red here, and every time the player passes a line, it will move the cursor upwards or downwards depending on whether the number of the line is odd or even. The notes available for playing in that line are marked in yellow and green, and yellow means the note will be played and green means a pause. Once the cursor reaches the end of the playable area, it wraps around and goes back to the start. If you look closely, the playable areas have a length of prime numbers, 13, 17, and so on. This guarantees that no sequence will ever be exactly like one you heard previously. And by the way, the numbers you see on these fields are referring to the MIDI notes played. Internally, I organized this by creating two big, two-dimensional arrays containing the pauses and the notes. There's also an array containing the position of the cursor in each line. Each starting point is marked by a 3, an audible note is marked by a 2, a pause by a 1 and a non-playable note by 0. The last challenge here was to determine the correct starting point for all the lines. You can start playback at any time, but you will have to start playing the sequence in exactly the right spot. And if we assume the universe was created 3.8 trillion years ago, we can easily determine the number of seconds since then by multiplying by 365 days for 24 hours, 60 minutes and 60 seconds. We can then determine the current date and since all computers determine the date by counting the seconds since the 1st January of 1970, we can add that number to the age of the universe to get a unique timestamp. And now the modular function comes in handy. By calculating the number of seconds modulo the number of nodes in the sequence, we will find the cursor's position in the first line. And from there on we just need to advance or retract the playing position by one on each line and then we can start the sequencer. The result is a relaxing melody that is never too dissonant because of its pentatonic nature. You can try that yourself by visiting the webpage linked in this video's description or downloading the app from the Android or iOS App Store. 
This is completely free, but you can always choose to use the donate button to support Benjamin. Yep, yeah, that's it for today. If you ever created your own musical algorithm, please post it in the comments under this video. And if you found this interesting or entertaining, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or giving this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.